In this video, we're going to go over how to assemble one of my arc reactor kits. Now, if you want to see more high level how this thing works, check out my overview video. That goes over how I got this level of light diffusion, some of the 3D models, the electronics, such as the PCBs that I had made from PCBWay. But this video is more specifically for those folks who ended up buying one of my arc reactor kits off Etsy. Now, these kits are actually extremely easy to assemble. It comes with a 9 volt clip, so you can just get your own battery, connect it, and you can simply flip the switch to turn it on. So you can see it's a fully functional reactor. The only difference is that the wire is not attached to each coil. So you can simply hand wrap that wire and that's all you have to do. The reason that I don't include the wire pre-wrapped is because one, I wanted to keep the price well below $200 on these reactors. And two, some folks wanted to actually paint their coils or their rings different colors. So if you wanted to paint these pieces, all you have to do is unscrew these three screws, pull these four rings off, and then these parts just snap off. You can just pop them off and pop them back on. I do include two extras of these in case you end up accidentally breaking one. So they do come with extras and you can very easily just hand tighten these back again on the back with these screws here. So the only thing that you need to get this coil onto here is a pair of pliers and a hot glue gun. A tape measure could be good so you can measure 18 inches for each coil. So let's get into the rest of the video where I go over the tips and tricks for how to make sure that this ends up with a really, really tidy jaw like this and how I was able to get such a smooth back that's actually quite strong and it's not gonna catch on your clothing and things like that. Now for each of these coils, you're gonna want about 18 inches of wire. No more than 18 inches because you're still gonna have a little bit of extra that you're gonna cut off there but that's gonna ensure you have something to hold on to to get the full coil complete. It's gonna be a little bit tangled. Don't ever pull on it because again, you don't want those hard kinks. Those are gonna be challenging to work out. So I'm gonna use my needle nose pliers and I'm actually gonna make a little hook at the end here. Just like this. And we're gonna do this again for every coil that we do. This little hook is gonna help me get it started and I'm going to thread it on through. And this is where the hook comes in. We're basically going to loop it around right like so. So it's hooked on the edge of the PCB and we're gonna push it so that it's right behind this coil. And now we've got something that we can put tension on. So I'm going to pull gently till it's tight. You don't wanna pull so tight that anything comes loose. Um, you'll also wanna keep a consistent direction for all your coils. You probably will never ever notice that they go a different way. It's a very small difference, but I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So I'm gonna start them all the same way. So from the back, I'm starting from the right. I've got the hook. I'm going to pull it along tight and smooth here. And then I'm gonna gently loop it around the back. Again, we don't wanna do any sudden kinks or turns that's gonna cause those tight angles to occur because we want this to look really smooth. So I'm gonna pull this through and now I'm gonna put a little bit of tension on it, tighten it up and gently with my fingernail, I'm gonna push it flat so that it lays a little bit flatter and then pull again. And each one of these coils that we do, we want it to be right next to the last one. We don't want any crisscrossing or overlapping because that will look bad. So you might be wondering why I have the center rings out of it right now. I've just taken these out so you can more clearly see how I'm wrapping the wire without these things obstructing the view, but you can certainly wrap these coils while having the rings in place. That's totally fine. One other note while you're doing this, you don't want to ever pull so tight that you might crack the PCB. It'd be very unlikely for you to be able to do that, but just pull firm enough, don't really crank on each of these wires. You'll want to go ahead and grab this and pull it tight. And then you can kind of tuck this underneath the last wire that you did, push it under there a little bit, and that's not gonna go anywhere. But I encourage just to use a little bit of hot glue to help make sure that that doesn't pop out and catch your clothing or something like that. So just a thin bead there, and that should hold it in place. And that completes our first coil. So it's nice and smooth. We notice that there's no overlaps and it looks just right. And we're gonna go ahead and continue that for the rest of the loops here. One note when making your hooks is ensure that they're really small like this. If you end up twisting and it's too long, just cut the excess off. This is still copper conductive wire, even though it has enamel on it and it shouldn't, you don't want it so long that it's floating around in here and might cause a short. It probably won't, but it's better that you keep this short rather than longer. So each of these coils takes eight wraps. So there's gonna be eight rows of copper on each one. And that pure copper, it just really does make these things really pop and look fantastic. Now, when you're wrapping these wires, it can be pretty easy to get them to overlap. See how this one happened right here? So don't worry about it. Just simply push this back a little bit until you're able to push those together and then get it right back on the correct side and push it back right on through. I'm gonna use my pliers at the end. I don't wanna grab in the middle here because that could leave some marring on this copper. I wanna grab the end because that's gonna be cut off in a second here as I wrap it around. 
and that finishes up my coil. Um, cut that off right there, and I'll push it back underneath there and put a bead. All right, so we're on to our last coil now. Now this one's certainly different because we have these wires, and the next thing that you really need to do is get a little piece of non-conductive tape. Electrical tape could be great. Make sure that you don't have too thick of a pile here. Folding it once is a good idea. Sticky side out, cut it to size, place it over those pegs. This is going to ensure that there's not gonna ever be any contact from the positive and negative metal terminals and this wire. So make sure that you're safe. Same with these guys. We're gonna wanna kinda spread them out a little bit so that the, the wires can go right between them. Now, since the little terminals are right behind here, I'm gonna make this guy a little bit shorter just to make sure that I'm not touching any of those connections in there. Okay, so I've got the loop really small now so that it's not gonna be reaching over into any of those soldered joints, just enough for it to hold it in place. And we'll pull our coil through here. Again, if you get a coil like this where it's starting to make a kink, gently try to push it through and let up some pressure on the back so that you don't end up pulling into a little ball. The wire itself is pretty forgiving. You can get it back to shape by, again, gently pulling on it. Snip the end, and there you have it. So you can see it looks really nice. All of our coils are tidily done. There's nothing to snag. So you're gonna grab a nine volt to let this guy run. So let's plug this in here and looks fantastic. And you can see it's super thin, got that great detail. And then of course we've got our magnetics, magnetics in the back here so we can snap it to things. Um, but again, you will want some larger magnets to really give it a crisp bite there. So I do hope that you enjoyed this build and the real copper certainly helps really make this guy shine. Now, as with all of my videos, I do hope to inspire someone to try something new, learn something new. If you want to get into 3D modeling, I definitely encourage it. It's a great way to bring your own ideas to life. Now, if you don't want to get into 3D printing at the same time as you're learning 3D modeling and all of that, send your 3D models to PCBWay. They do 3D printing, CNC, and they have a bunch of flavors of each so they can definitely get what you're looking for there. I don't have my own PCB equipment, so I order my PCBs through PCB Way, and they do a fantastic job. I genuinely do recommend going through them. They have great customer service. They're super fast at their shipping. All of the cuts were super smooth. The silk screens look fantastic. The writing is super clear, which you'll see for yourself in your own reactors. And again, I would just love to see more folks using personalized electronics in their projects. And all that's left now is to go cosplay as Tony Stark.